Hare Krishna everyone, we are continuing to read the teachings of Lord Kapila, the book by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Chapter 14, Bhakti as Ultimate Liberation. Continuing. Why has Narayana become many? He has created us for enjoyment. Anandamayo Bhyasat He has created us in the same way a gentleman accepts a wife. If one takes on a wife, he will beget children. A man takes on the responsibility of maintaining a wife and family, children, because he thinks that through them he will enjoy life. In the material world, we see that during the evening a man tries to enjoy life with his wife and children and friends. Therefore, he takes on so many responsibilities. This is supposed to be ananda, bliss. But because it takes place in the material world, the ananda is covered, converted into something distasteful. However, we can enjoy this ananda when we are with our Supreme Father, Krishna. We are all children of the Supreme Father, and in Bhagavad Gita 14.4, Krishna claims all species of life as his children. Sarva yoni shukantiya murtaya sambhavantiya Tasam Brahma Mahadyonir Ahambija Pradahpita. It should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the seed giving father. Unquote. The Supreme Father, Sri Krishna, has created us for his enjoyment, not to create distress. Although we are Krishna's children, we have given up our Supreme Father because we wish to enjoy ourselves independently. Consequently, we are suffering. If a rich man's son gives up his home to try to enjoy life independently, he simply suffers. It is to our benefit to return home, back to Godhead, to enjoy ourselves with our original father, Krishna. This will give us happiness. Krishna is full of all opulence. He possesses in totality wealth, strength, beauty, fame, knowledge and renunciation. He possesses everything in unlimited quantity. If we want to return to our original father, we can enjoy ourselves with him unlimitedly. Unlimitedly. It is not that we can enjoy ourselves independent of Krishna, nor can we say that to enjoy ourselves we have to become one with Krishna. In the material world, our father gives us our birth, and we are an entity separate from him. If we are suffering, do we say, My dear father, I am suffering, will you please once again make me one with you? Is this a very good proposal? A father says, I have begotten you, begotten you separately to enjoy yourself. You remain separate, and I remain separate, and in this way we will enjoy. Now you're asking me to become one with me? What, what is this nonsense? <laughs> the Mayavadis want to become one with the Supreme because they are suffering in the material world. Krishna has created us to enjoy ourselves in his company. But due to our desire for independent enjoyment, we are not doing that. 
Consequently, we are suffering in this material world. And because we are suffering, we are thinking of becoming one with our Father. It is Maya's business to try to build up the living entity, to puff him up. And Maya's last snare is to try to make the living entity think that he can become one with God. My bodies think that becoming one with the Supreme is the highest perfection. But this is not perfection. Because our original constitutional position is to enjoy the company of Krishna. Friends sit together in a room and enjoy one another's company. What enjoyment can one have by himself? Variety is the mother of enjoyment, and real enjoyment is being in Krishna's company. Therefore, devotees never desire to become one with the Supreme. It is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who says, Mama Janmani Janmani Shwari Bhagavat Bhakti Rahaituki Tvai Amama Janmani Janmani Shwari Bhavatad Bhakti Rahaituki Tvai Bhavatad Quote, My dear Lord, I do not want to put an end to the process of birth and death. I am not anxious for Mukti. Let me go ahead and take one birth after another. It doesn't matter. Simply, let me engage in your service, birth after birth." Unquote. Shikshashtaka verse 4 This is a real Ananda. Unless we are fully qualified devotees, we cannot enter into the Vaikuntha planets. We have to live outside in the Brahma Jyoti. If we desire this, Krishna will give us the opportunity. After all, Krishna is everything. He is Brahma Jyoti and Paramatma also. If we want to become one with the Supreme, we will be allowed to live outside the Vaikuntha planets in the Brahma Jyoti. However, that position is not eternal. As we have explained before, we cannot live eternally in the Brahma Jyoti because we want variety. Without variety there is no enjoyment. In all conditions, in all conditions, the pure devotee is liberated. He may engage in some occupation or business, but he is always thinking of how to serve Krishna, and in this way he is automatically liberated. It is not that he thinks of becoming one with the Supreme and attaining liberation. Rather, his liberation lies in his personal relationship with the Supreme Lord himself. Chapter 15 Meditation on the Lord's Transcendental Forms Text 34 Naikat matam me sprihayanti kechin matpada seva birata madiha yenyo nyato bhaga vatah prasajya sabhajayante mama paurushani. Translation A pure devotee who is attached to the activities of devotional service and who always engages in the service of my lotus feet, never desires to become one with me. Such a devotee, who is unflinchingly engaged, always glorifies my pastimes and 
activities. Purport There are five kinds of liberation stated in the scriptures. One is to become one with the Supreme Lord, Supreme Personality of Godhead, or to forsake one's individuality and merge into the Supreme Spirit. This is called Ekatmatam. A devotee never accepts this kind of liberation. The other four liberations are to be promoted to the same planet as God, Vaikuntha, to associate personally with the Supreme Lord, to achieve the same opulence as the Lord, and to attain His same bodily features. A pure devotee, as Kapila Muni will explain, does not aspire for any of the five liberations. He especially despises the attempt to become one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sri Prabodhananda Saraswati, a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, said, Kaivalyam Narakayate. Quote, the happiness of becoming one with the Supreme Lord, which is the aspiration of the Mayavadis, is considered hellish. Hellish. Unquote. That oneness is not for pure devotees. There are many so-called devotees who think that in the conditioned state we may worship the personality of Godhead, but that ultimately there is no personality. They say that since the absolute truth is impersonal, one can imagine a personal form of the impersonal absolute truth for the time being. But as soon as one becomes liberated, the worship stops. That is the theory put forward by Mayavadi philosophy. Actually, the impersonalists do not merge into the existence of the Supreme Person, but into his personal bodily luster, which is called Brahma Jyoti. Although that Brahma Jyoti is non different from his personal body, that sort of oneness merging into the bodily luster of the Personality of Godhead, is not accepted by a pure devotee, because the devotees engage in greater pleasure than merging into his existence. The greatest pleasure is to serve the Lord. Devotees are always thinking about how to serve Him, they're always designing ways and means to serve the Supreme Lord, even in the midst of the greatest material obstacles. My Vadis accept the descriptions of the pastimes of the Lord as myths, but actually they are not. They are historical facts. Pure devotees accept the narrations of the pastimes of the Lord as the absolute truth. The words Mama Paurushani, my glorious activities, are significant. Devotees are very much attached to glorifying the activities of the Lord, whereas my bodies cannot even think of these activities. According to them, the absolute truth is impersonal. But without personal existence, how can there be activity? Because impersonalists take the activities mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic literatures as fictitious, fictitious stories, I want to say fictional, fictitious stories they interpret them most mischievously. They have no idea of the personality of Godhead. They unnecessarily poke their noses into the scripture and interpret it in a deceptive way 
in order to mislead the innocent public. The activities of the Mayavada philosophy are very dangerous to the public, and therefore Lord Chaitanya warned, he warned his disciples never to hear from any Mayavadi about any scripture. Mayavadis will spoil the entire process and the person hearing them will never be able to come to the path of devotional service to attain the highest perfection. He only may be able to do so after a very long time. Jai. Very important, very important point. We shall continue with this chapter tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. Please check out our website shravanamdiaries.com and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.